But I want to turn our attention overseas because of leaders of EU, NATO, and G7 countries are all meeting in Brussels today to weigh additional action against Russia over its invasion of Ukraine. The U.S. announcing sanctions against 400 additional Russian individuals. That includes more than 300 lawmakers. But efforts to reduce European reliance on Russian energy imports, a big focus over the next few days. We've been watching the energy markets very closely here in National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan telling reporters yesterday that this is there has been a substantial topic of discussion, or I should say this has been a substantial topic of discussion, and there will be an announcement, according to Sullivan, on Friday on this very issue. Now, the expectation here is that the U.S. will increase its LNG deliveries to the EU significantly over the next several months. And of course, Brian, it's worth reminding our viewers that we're talking about this as Europe tries to reduce its reliance on Russian oil and gas. About 40 percent of natural gas uh, comes from Russia. 25 percent of its oil comes from there. There's a very substantial volume that needs to be met to fill this void. And Goldman Sachs out with a note saying that this is largely expected to be done through reallocation of supply, not necessarily an increase in overall export volumes. But energy, of course, is going to continue to be a focus. And we're going to be watching that one closely. Brian, it feels like, you know, a few weeks ago, we were talking about this huge unity between EU countries. And now that the focus is really honed in on the energy part of it, we're starting to see some fractures here. And of course, as expected, those like Germany, not necessarily in favor of saying no to Russian oil, just given their reliance on that. Um, so the U.S. certainly uh, going to be playing a big role in, in trying to pivot away from Russia on that front. Yes, yeah, certainly. And it's worth noting that the discussions in Brussels are more focused on the kind of specific security aspect that NATO can control. And it seemed like based off of the readout from the White House, at least, that we had gotten from the meetings so far, it seems like everyone is still on the same page about wanting to allocate defense resources to uh, helping Ukraine in this situation. Of course, maybe not as directly as President Zelensky would like, but what we do know is that NATO is fully intent on uh, increasing their posturing against Russia. Now, of course, this doesn't necessarily mean that NATO is going to have a full-on conflict with Russia, but it's worth noting that I actually just got an inbox uh, in my inbox a note from Moody's Investor Service that looked at the possible credit impact of a Russia and NATO military conflict. Now, Moody's is very careful to say this is not an expectation that they have, that there would be any sort of conflict. But the fact that they're already starting to write about how impactful that would be, um, noting that it could be uh, rapid credit transitions for many more debt issuers than would be the case if the uh, conflict remains uh, kind of constrained between Russia and Ukraine. Look, I think the NATO story of all of this is very much in focus, especially now that we know that uh, Jan Stoltenberg, the secretary general, is likely to stay at NATO a little bit longer uh, because they are planning on extending his term as opposed to his original plans to depart to become the head of the Central Bank of Norway. Yeah, a change of plans, obviously, with this conflict and, and worth knowing that we're now in the second month of this. So we're going to continue to follow that.